one functioning air gun. Hello everyone and welcome back to Clear Amateurs. I'm Jamie and today I'm going to be doing some restoration work on this. Now this is a Webley & Scott Webley Jr. Now, this is an air pistol that uh, was produced from 1946 up to 1973, however this is quite an early example, and I'll talk about how we know that in just a minute. However, before that, I'll just talk a bit about where and why I got this gun. So I picked this up for £40 at a gun shop in Biggin Hill in Kent called the Gun Room and Saddlery. A uh, really great gun shop, I always get a bit nervous the first time I go to a new gun shop because I know they can be a bit clicky, um, a bit hostile to people who haven't been there before. They're really nice, really helpful, they've got a great range of shotguns and air, um, air rifles, air pistols. I also saw on their website they had a bunch of very old air pistols um, and kind of deactivated weapons largely for decorative purposes, but I thought I'd maybe pick one of these up and see if I could do a bit of a restoration on it. So how do we know this is a really early gun? Well. If you look, I uh, probably won't be able to see it on camera, but here we've got on, engraved on the barrel uh, the Webley Junior 177, Webley and Scott Limited, Birmingham 4. Now that 4 was removed in 1958, so this immediately dates this as a pre-1958 gun. And if you look at the rear iron sight, it's got this rounded shape that was removed in the 40s. So this gun dates back to the late 40s, so this is an immediately post-World War II Webley Jr. And considering it's in relatively good condition, uh, we can see the corners of the vehicle like grips have chipped off. That happens a lot on one of these. I did manage to save one of the chips that chipped off when I was first disassembling the gun, so we'll get that back on. However, we'll have to try and find another way to repair the other one. Now, when I picked this up, I first thing I noticed was that the cocking arm is detached. It's not in this slot in the cylinder where it should be. Now I was really hoping that all this would need doing was new seals and popping that back in. So the first thing I did was got this off and tried putting it uh, back into the cylinder. So we'll start off by doing that, just flathead screwdriver. And removing the screw that holds in the cocking arm. So take that out. Reattach the cocking arm. And this is where I noticed something was more seriously wrong. So normally these have a huge amount of resistance and there's absolutely nothing there. So that tells me either in here there was a broken spring, or worst case scenario, no spring at all. So let's get it open and see what's going on. So to get these up apart, what you want to do is take the cocking arm screw out again. Remove the cocking arm, so exact opposite of what I did to reattach it. Free the barrel from, or free the breech there, slot this out, and then you need to unscrew this end cap. Now, people have a lot of trouble getting these off, they often resort to using mole grips, which scuffs all of this. However, I realised that the smallest uh, socket um, holder, socket piece, out of my socket set fitted perfectly in this gap, which is really handy, because what you can then do is get that in there, and it just unscrews. Now this came out really easily, which said straight away to me that this has been opened up before. And we find that once that is free, there's a spring guide, no spring was present. So we need to try and get a new spring for this. Now I picked one of these up from gunspares.co.uk for about £10. Uh, they do very massively in price, especially if you're looking for originals, then you're looking at kind of nearly as much as the gun just for the spring. Um, so one of the things we're going to want to do is to replace that spring. The seals on this, so you can see the breech seal there, isn't in bad condition but it is a bit scuffed so I picked up a new breech seal and if we can get the hammer out, I just need a bit of help. So pushing down the trigger to free it, so you can see where the spring should be, still no spring, and the seal there is completely 
ruined. Um, this, when I first took this apart, literally there were just bits of leather and rubber peeling off of there. So I'm going to try to get this off, get this screw out, and then be able to fit a new seal in here too. Now, the seal that I picked up from Gunspares was a slightly later model, however I believe it's the same size, so fingers crossed. If not, I might try making a new leather one of these, as in the early guns, these were made of leather. So let's try and get this screw out. Even narrow bit required. Okay, so when I looked at this previously, I did find that this was stuck in there quite tight, so it might be that I have to cut away the rest of the seal and find some other way of getting it out. So that's just chipping the screw. So take a knife to this, get it off, and then maybe have to use pliers to remove it. Yeah, so that's completely perished. I didn't even really have to cut there, it just tore. really stuck in there. Good old WD-40. If it doesn't move and it should, WD-40. If it does move and it shouldn't, duct tape. Okay, hopefully this will get the 60 or 70 years of grease off. Maybe even get it moving. So yeah, you've got all perished rubber in there, which is basically acting like glue. And there we have it, got it moving. So get that unscrewed, so you've got your hammer and your pin for the seal. So at this point, I'll probably clean this up before I fit the seals all together. However, we are going to get our package from Gunspares open and see if the seals actually fit or if I'm going to be making a new one. Okay, so opening our package, we've got our shiny new spring obviously not an original um but that cost a fortune i think webley is one of those companies kind of like crossman where they used a lot of parts interchangeably between let me just go to the invoice a lot of parts interchangeably between their models so hopefully we can still get these fit and in there we've got our new breech seal which looks like the right size and we've got a plastic seal for our um for our hammer. So this does look like a different design. But it looks like it will still seat in the chamber nice and tightly. We'll get some air gun oil on there before we put it in. Okay then, so before we put the seal assembly in, we can give this a bit of a clean. Now, there's all kind of grease and crap in there, so what we're gonna use is just a tiny bit of white spirit. Now, this will do rubber seals no favors, so you're gonna make sure that we're going to want to make sure that it's nice and dry in there before we actually get the seals in. So in order to do this, I'm going to take the socket bit that I used earlier and have got an extender on there, get a bit, a bit of kitchen roll around here, pop some white spirit on, give it a clean, and then do the same with some fresh kitchen roll to give it a dry. Just kind of making a makeshift barrel cleaner here. Um, I do have a barrel cleaner, um, however, obviously it's designed for a barrel rather than for the cylinder. So there 
you can see years of grease and crap actually not quite as bad as I expected or quite as bad as it looked. I had a look down there earlier. coming out dry so we're good let's try and get our new seals onto our hammer so what we're going to want to do is first seat the screw in there into there and then onto the end really quite a different design on this lace model but all of the sizes all of the bores that it's drilled out to are as far as I can see the same it is going to be a very flat tight fit so we we'll use a couple of drops of pellet gun oil Hopefully, if I know, then needs to disassemble this as well again later as well. Make the screw a bit easier to get out. So, okay, so after a lot of fighting with this screw and this seal, what we can try doing is using the piston as a jig. So, line this up on the top and then screw the screw into it, just gives a bit of mechanical advantage. So, let's see if we can get it in that way. So. Nice and centered. So really what you want is a nice thin but wide screwdriver. So here I'm using my uh, CLKT Viva and that seems to be doing quite a good job of driving it in. I just felt something yield, so hopefully we're in. Okay, and then we'll pop that out again so we can get this one on. Okay, so that's our screw in our first seal, and that one's going to go into this one onto that. Again, just need a few drops of pellet gun oil just to keep it oily and let it slip in. Okay, now the screws are nearly even tighter, but hopefully, if we can just get a bit of thread through, we'll be able to do the same thing. There we go. Now, if this screws down, it should center it, but do try and keep it straight if you find it's not. Do you want to get a good grip rather than ripping skin off your hand? Always good to have rubber gloves handy. And having your screwdriver on tight and helps as well. about as tight as we're going to get it. So get some more oil on the seal. Good amount on there. And it's a fresh seal, it's not like we're oiling one that's already in use. And then, all being well, we can get this back into the gun. Remembering that this is going to force air up the barrel, around this kind of U-bend in here, and out for breach. quite a lot of resistance and it's the thread has chewed it up a bit it might be this slightly later one it's maybe not as close in size as I thought
So I can't get the piston into the cylinder, so I'm going to have a go at actually assembling it with the spring and see if with a bit of movement this becomes operable. So. Get that in, remembering to press the, the trigger to allow it to move up into what would effectively be the fired position. Again, just using that socket bit and extender to help us. Okay, so that's now seated in what would be the fired position. I'm going to try and get our spring in now. Very long spring, full length cylinder. And then take this, our spring guide, and try and get it screwed back in again using our socket driver. So get it pressed down a couple of turn, hundred turns using the heel of your hand, at which point then use the socket driver. Have it now got a spring in there and we've got seals. So let's get the barrel and the cocking arm back on and see if we've got a functional air gun. So as we did right at the beginning, slot that in there, get the firing pins, uh, the cocking arm screwed back in. might even have a functioning air gun. So no fact that now it sits flush, this is no longer holding it up, so this spring here holds it down. Let's see if we can cock it. Now, probably want eye protection, obviously I've got safety glasses on if you're doing this, especially if you've got something that hasn't been fired in maybe decades. Let's see if we can cock it. I hope nothing bursts out at us. It's cocked. We ready? One functioning air gun. So after that first successful test shot, the gun bound up completely. It wouldn't cock, would barely get past about here with the, cock, with the barrel cocking it. Um, and I just completely disassembled it, put it back together, and then it fired once and bound up again. So I disassembled it a third time, cleaned everything, oiled everything, and now you should see that with enough effort, cock smoothly. And fires every time. Uh, not sure what I fixed by doing that. Clearly there was something in the barrel that the piston was, or something in the cylinder that the piston was catching on, stopping it from cocking, but it is now cocking smoothly. Though I just saw it taking a huge amount of effort. It's called the Junior. I can't imagine any child having the strength to cock that. Uh, one other thing with cocking these, I do you do get tempted to put your finger on the trigger, um, but it won't then cock and it will just snap back on your finger. So how are you holding it? Make sure that you haven't got your finger on the trigger while cocking. So run this through the crony in a bit, see what power it's pushing out. Um, I'm not optimistic, probably not gonna be much. Before that, we're gonna have a go at fixing one of these grips. So you can see there, the uh, corner of the grips chip off quite easily, and that's happened on both sides of this gun. However, one side happened when I first disassembled it. So we're gonna have a go at putting that back on now. So moving grips on these, really easy. Flathead screwdriver in there. And it comes right off. So put the screws to the side. Hoping you get that bit of plastic back in there. I have to work out something for the other side because this was already missing when I got the gun on the other side. So she needs a little bit of epoxy resin, just the tiniest fix. We don't want any creeping out around the seam. So give that a good mix. Now obviously this sets quite quickly. Um, so I have to work quickly, you know, so I'm using a skewer just to get the tiniest amount on the joint. Now the way it's broken is quite lucky, it's going to be quite a nice surface to get the adhesive onto.
then just remove any excess glue at the kitchen roll so we get a nice neat finish. And we can always take a bit of wet and dry to that at the end if there are any little bits of glue remaining on there. The reason these snap off so easily is there's this pin on the back which sits in this hole in the grip uh, to stop it from moving around. However, if it does get a knock, it does then cause that corner of the plastic grip to snap off. I think this happened on pretty much all of the Webley Juniors that I saw when I was looking to buy one. Uh, now, prior to the Second World War, so the pre-19... 39 Webley Juniors actually had wooden grips and when I went to the gun room and saddlery to pick this one up they did have one with wooden grips however this one just seems to be in the best condition overall they were later realised it didn't have a spring um, and so this is the one that I bought here I've got a JSB match Diablo test pack and a nice big wad of cardboard shouldn't have anything going through that does help you both scared and impressed. Using the HTX 3000 chronograph, and if you just like some nice light pellet to start with. Okay, so we've got an 8.4 grain pellet there. Now, the chronograph's on and set up. So Gun. Pellet in. Now it's a smooth ball barrel. These use a lot of shoot darts, so it probably won't make a great seal. But here we go. Okay, and that was 183 feet per second. Oh, it's really very respectful. It's much better than I was expecting. Um, I know people still. Have these restored up to kind of 250 300 um but a uh, post i was reading on pyramid air about the guy who was showing on he was saying when he first got his it was only doing about 150 p uh, 150 fps with an eight grain pellet so that's not too bad at all but i am still inclined to have a go at changing the breech seal to see if we can get a nicer seal there and uh increase that fps we'll just put one more through it and just see if it fares any better So there again, as I was cocking out, I did find myself putting my finger on the trigger, which is why it wouldn't cock. There is no built-in safety on these, it's just a case of keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to fire. Okay, and 186, so surprisingly consistent and giving out a surprising amount of power. But let's get that breech seal changed and see if we can get that even higher. Okay, now you can see there where I've had to use quite a lot of oil and also the gun's quite dirty, we are actually getting some oil and dirt splattering out. Uh, if it's a more powerful gun, I'd probably be quite worried about it dieseling, but with it being so low power, it's not really a problem. Um, but maybe a bit more cleaning and a bit of oil to be removed there. Okay, so we've got our grip prepared. Uh, we've done a power test. It's not hugely impressive, but it's also not that bad uh, considering the age and condition of the gun. What we're gonna do is have a go at replacing the breech seal. So to do this, we wanna get the barrel out of the way, which we've already done several times today. So just by unscrewing barrel back so that the cocking arm comes out of this hole and in there hopefully you can see the old breech seal 
So these were a leather ring with a brass ring or a brass tube inside. Um, as happens with most of these, the brass tube is pretty badly dented and that will be restricting airflow. So we're going to try and remove that now. People make all sorts of specialised tools for doing this. I don't have any of those, so we're going to try and do it using this. It's what we call a Yankee screwdriver, or at least that's what I know it as. It's kind of a screwdriver with almost a drill for a head, and this is for drilling into screws. I think this would be just the right size to get in there and free this so that we can replace it with our new rubber breech seal and hopefully get a better seal, better airflow, and a few more FPS. So let's give it a go. Fitting in nicely. Okay, now let's remove the brass tube. Uh, these norms should come out in one piece if I'm understanding it correctly. So we are now just going to have to dislodge the leather washer. Much like the seals on the piston, these completely perish, so we are just going to have to kind of chip them out, chip this out. last of our old seal. So we'll get that cleaned up in there and we'll get our new one in. Okay so we have ended up with a small amount of the old leather stuck in the hole that the air passes through so what I'm going to try and do is to put a single shot through the gun um, with no transfer port in there at all and hopefully blast that out So that's done a great job, that's cleared it right out. I'm just going to get it nice and clean in there before fitting our new breech seal. I'm not actually sure this has ever been changed, that's probably been in here for near on 70 years. Okay, so just to get any last little bits of residue, little tiny bits of leather out of. Uh, where our new breech seal needs to go. I'm just going to give it a little clean with a cotton bud, Q-tip, whatever you want to call it, and a little bit of white spirit. Again, this will do rubber seals no favours, so I'm going to then dry it with the other end of the Q-tip to make sure we don't immediately perish our nice new seal. Okay, I'm just making sure that we're not then guessing that into the hole where the air passes through it will get into a barrel and ruin our new piston seal. So you can see 70 years of gunk and residue behind there, so I'm just give it a good clean. Okay. And finally, we can fit our nice new breech, uh, breech seal. So you want the flat side of it facing the barrel to ensure that you've got maximum surface area to get that nice seal on there. Now, once again, to fit this, we can put a drop of pellet gun oil on it just to make sure that it slips in nicely without burring and causing any leaks. So as I said before, this isn't a replacement leather and brass seal, it's got very expensive if you want original or recreation ones. This is a rubber seal, which hopefully is of the correct size. So pop that in there. And then I'm just gonna gently push it into place using the barrel. Much healthier looking 
breech seal on there now. So let's get the barrel back in and we can do another test shot to see if it's made any difference to power output. So barrel back in, exactly the same way we've done the last few times. Okay, and there we have it, our, for now, fully restored Webley Junior. So let's get the crony out again and see if we've managed to increase that power output at all. So when we carried out this test with the same JSB 8.7 uh, grain pellets before, we're getting about 184, 186 feet per second, which since calculated only 0.7 foot pounds. So pop another one in there and see what we've got. Now this is a smooth ball barrel, so it would be suitable for shooting darts, BBs, that sort of thing as well. Here we go. Okay, no reading on the crony that time, we'll just do another one. Okay, so chronograph not agreeing. Um, it does seem to be making cleaner holes in the cardboard, but I can't actually verify whether or not that has made it any more powerful. Um, so I hope we'll get that working and get some more footage, either in this video or another one. That's about it for today with this uh, Webley Junior pistol. I'm really pleased with how the restoration went. When I first bought it, I did have that moment of, oh God, what have I got myself in for? Um, but I'm actually really pleased with how this has turned out. In terms of what I'll be doing this with this next, probably not shooting it a whole lot. Um, I don't find that much time to shoot anyway. I spend more time uh, modifying and repairing air guns than I do actually shooting them. Um, in with this one, probably get it looking nice again. Just little rust spots, bits of bluing missing. Get it looking nice, fix up this grip, maybe turn it into more of an ornament. Um, but yeah, that's about it for today. This has been my restoration of this 1940-something Webley Junior pistol. Hope that you've enjoyed it. Please comment, like, subscribe. I've been Jamie, this has been Clue Amateurs, and I will see you next time.